History would call her the unsinkable Molly Brown. She called herself Margaret Brown. She was desperately concerned with the passengers left behind floating on the freezing water and wanted to go back and rescue them, but was overruled by the ship's coxswain, Robert Hitchens. Robert Hitchens stood at the front of the boat and predicted all sorts of dire consequences for all of the uh, people in the lifeboat. He said, we're going to die, we're going to starve to death, no one knows we're out here, uh, it's all over for all of us. And the women in the lifeboat, Margaret Brown in particular, became very angry with Robert Hitchens and threatened to throw him overboard. Hitchens stood his ground, and lifeboat six never returned. Margaret Brown was not asked to testify at the Titanic hearings after the wreck because she was a woman. She helped found the Titanic Survivors Committee. She ran for the U.S. Senate eight years before women were even allowed to vote in the U.S. She lobbied for the rights of laborers and during the First World War worked to restore areas in France devastated by combat. She really was the type of person who, who pulled herself up by her bootstraps and made a life for herself at a time when it was difficult for a woman to do many of the things that she did. In 1932, Margaret Brown received the Legion of Honor from the government of France. Later that same year, while staying at the Barbizon Hotel in New York, she collapsed from a stroke. She died on October 26, 1932. Soon afterwards, the legend of the unsinkable Molly Brown was born, thanks to a highly fanciful biography sprinkled with rumor and folk legend which became the basis for the famous Broadway musical and finally a movie starring Debbie Reynolds. <laughs>